Hi my loves, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my August books wrap up. My hair is looking very triangular and fluffy today and you're just going to have to deal with it because I just washed it and I don't want to style it. <laughs> so yes, triangle hair is the way forward today. Anyway, as I've said in multiple videos now over the past month or so, um, I've been in a bit of a reading slump. So there are far fewer books than there usually would be today. It's kind of upsetting. I don't like being in a reading slump, but I'm just sort of going with it at this point. I'm just finding it so, so, so difficult to focus on reading. Um, I think this probably applies to any hobby that you have, which is either mentally or physically taxing. I think, not that I find books really mentally taxing, but you know, it requires concentration. It requires a little bit of brain work um, more often than not. So yes, I think it happens sometimes. You just kind of fall out of it and it's difficult to get back into it and I'm just going with it because if I start panicking about it I'm sure I'll just make it worse. Um, I'm sure it will return to me sooner rather than later. I'm just in a bit of a slump and that is that. What also happens when I'm having a bit of a reading slump is that I find it difficult to talk about books um, in the same way because obviously my focus for things that I am getting through and that I am reading is not quite as on it. So. Um, it might be a little bit of a quick one today. I know that might be a bit disappointing to you guys who like the long wrap-ups. might be a relief for those of you who like shorter wrap-ups. Um, but such is life, you guys. Hopefully we'll be back to normal soon, back to normal program programming. Um, as I mentioned in my, I don't know if it will be my last video or my second to last video but I'm reading gonna try and read as many books from the book at long list this month that's my like focus so if you would like to read a book from the long list with me for book club um, then I have picked The New Wilderness by Diane Cook because the blurb to this just sounds so good um, and I'm really really excited to read it so this is also a debut novel although I think Cook has written a story collection called Man vs Nature and I think she's very much um, about nature writing which is some of my favourite writing. I love nature writing. So this is the blurb. Bee's five-year-old daughter Agnes is slowly wasting away. The smog and pollution of the overdeveloped, overpopulated metropolis they call home is ravaging her lungs. Bee knows she cannot stay in the city but there is only one alternative, the wilderness state. Mankind has never been allowed to venture into this vast expanse of untamed land until now. Bee and Agnes join 18 other volunteers who agree to take part in a radical experiment. They must slowly learn how to live in the unpredictable, often dangerous wilderness, leaving no trace on their surroundings in their quest to survive. But as Agnes embraces this new existence, Bee realises that saving her daughter's life might mean losing her, losing her in ways she hadn't foreseen. So it looks like it's kind of a dystopia, kind of apocalyptic, um, and I'm really, really excited about it. So there is that one. It is a little bit long, which I apologise for. I usually try and pick slightly shorter books for book club, but I was so excited about this, the blurb for this um, that I wanted to pick it up. I know it's a new book. So if you'd like to read a backlist title with me and a non-fiction, I have been doing a fiction and non-fiction recently. I don't know if I'll do it forever and always, but if you would like to read a backlist title with me, then my other suggestion for book club this month is The Fire This Time um, by Jasmine Ward, or she's edited it. It's a collection of essays and poems and other little bits of writing all about race um, in the US primarily, I think. I have actually been sort of reading it on and off in little increments. The reason I haven't got to show you is because I read it on my Kindle and because when I'm at home I don't read on my Kindle that much. I haven't been reading it very quickly um, but I have been reading little bits here and there and I've really really been, um, well not enjoying it because it's hardly a topic to enjoy reading about but I've found the writing in it um, and the kind of collection that Ward has put together is really excellent so that is the other option um, for this month and maybe if you want to read both you can read both um, but anyway let's get started with the books shall we um, I picked two books last month for book club one was a massive success for me and one was a huge disappointment success being Between the World and Me by Ta-Nehisi Coates um, and the disappointment being redhead by the side of the road by Anne Tyler. Let's start with the good, shall we? I loved 
this book. I really, really love this book. And the more I think about it, um, the more I love it. Like, it's one of those that's sort of growing in my mind a little bit because it's quite a short little book because despite my reading slump I read this in a few hours um, and it really completely captured my attention so that just shows you how good it is or how good I found it at least. So it is a non-fiction book it's um, I'm just going to describe it first and then we'll talk about feelings. In it Coates writes to his son um, about his experience of being black in America um, and how he came to terms basically with all the ways that blackness, whiteness, race, racism um, kind of play out in America. So he grew up in Baltimore, um, surrounded by violence both in the home, outside of the home, on the streets, um, both kind of physical violence and also institutional violence in schools. Um, he then attended um, the historic black university Howard Howard University, where he saw kind of the fullness of black existence and the fullness of the black diaspora. And whilst he was there, he kind of initially got drawn in by um, the black royalty sort of idea. Um, and then he describes his disenchantment with that. And then we move on to his life as a prominent journalist, looking at police br brutality and white supremacy. Um, so there's lots going on here. He obviously I don't know if, this, if it sounds familiar to you guys immediately, but he's obviously sort of writing in the legacy of James Baldwin. Um, obviously we saw in The Fire Next Time um, when James Baldwin writes a letter to his nephew, sort of about the same thing, about his experiences of race in America, about how race functions in America. Um, so he does, he's definitely sort of um, playing with that here in a sort of longer form. And he has a Baldwin-esque style here as well where it's quite emotive it's quite powerful there's obviously a lot of memoir in here there's a lot of personal details and life in here um, but it's also woven with excellent analysis excellent theory and the two coming together makes the arguments more powerful if you know what I mean the balance between the two is perfect the tone is perfect um, I just really really enjoyed it and well, if in, again, if enjoyed is quite the right word, definitely highly recommend this one. You know, it, like I said, you can read it in a few hours and it would be great for those of you guys who struggle or don't enjoy and are not gripped by um, traditional non-fiction, which doesn't have that sort of memoir aspect or personal aspect, because I think he manages to get across lots of points here in quite an engaging way. So yes, I highly recommend it. I think everyone should read it. I think it would be good for anyone if you're familiar with um, black writing, if you're not familiar with black writing, um, I think it's accessible to everyone and useful and um, important for everyone. So that was a big success for me. But on the other hand, we have the big disappointment, which is Redhead by the Side of the Road by Anne Tyler. Fear not, Anne Tyler lovers. I will not give up on her because I did not like this book. I will, re I do actually have another of her books on my shelf. I plan to read um, some of her earlier novels from more of her like heyday kind of time, the novels that she's won prizes for. But this was not good. It wasn't even bad either, so it was just like fine, which is almost even worse. I, sometimes I prefer books I really disliked because at least you have something to kind of work against, whereas this one was just really, really average, which I'm really, really sad to say. Um, I'm actually frankly quite confused as to how it got nominated for the booker. Um, but anyway, it's about Micah, middle-aged man, really, really set in his routine. Um, his woman friend is... Is it his woman friend? Yeah, that's what he calls her. His woman friend is sort of almost threatened with eviction and a young man turns up at his door saying that he is his son. Um, so obviously this sounds like perfect kind of 20th century material you know we're going to see him transform it's going to be a bit psychological it's going to be realism it's going to be just like classic 20th century um, American fiction you know maybe we're going to get a little bit of humor from the set in his ways middle-aged man um, you know that kind of book uh, that's what I was expecting but this book is so just skimming the surface doing the least, um, yeah, the plot is disappointing, 
the revelations Micah, are having, Micah is having are like so obvious that they're har hardly revelatory. Like it's literally like a switch from I'm setting my routine to oh maybe I shouldn't be setting this routine. And then that's like basically it, um, which is fine, but you need a lot more than that, I think. Um, it's too short to kind of draw you in. So yes, the pros is smooth, accomplished, confident, um, and everything else that I expected, but all the rest of the stuff is disappointing. Okay, I read two Ursula Le Guin's this month. Um, I've talked about Le Guin so much recently that I am a little reluctant to ramble on about her again. Yes, I love her and I particularly love her Earthsea books, both of these Earthsea books. So um, I read Tales from Earthsea um, and then The Other Wind and these two plus the four that I read in like towards the end of last year, the Earthsea Quartet they're sometimes called, kind of complete the series. There's other little short stories but these are like the main book events um, for Earthsea. So I've basically finished the series now apart from maybe some stories here and there. So obviously Tales from Earthsea comes first before The Other Wind. Definitely recommend that you read this even though it's a bit weird to have a book of short stories in the middle of a series. I mean it didn't bother me, it might be weird. To some people, I um, definitely recommend you read this after the first four books and before this final book because the final story in this sort of takes you from those four books to um, the final book and is useful to know. Um, she also sort of describes events that happened before the first four books which I think are only sort of useful to know once you've read those, etc, etc. So in these, in both these books, to be fair, um, Le Guin continues to kind of revise and rewrite those first three novels um, in favour of the female characters and just sort of removing a little bit of the latent misogyny that was running through those early 70s books, um, which I love. I love about her as a writer that she sort of listened to people, recognised that changed it while still kind of working within that world that she'd already created which is very beautiful in other ways just had some of those elements where you're like mm, could be better for the female characters here there is quietude there's beauty in these stories obviously as with any collection really um there's going to be some that are better than others there's a particular one which i love which is about a man a very troubled man who has got himself into trouble at roke which is where the wizards live, the island of Roke, sort of goes off on his own and finds redemption, love and kindness in a small remote village um, and sort of just thrives there eventually and that was just a story I loved. It kind of doesn't really have any relation to the overarching story but I just thought it's so it was so nice and so indicative of the kind of thing that Le Guin is doing in these books. So yes, really enjoyed these but enjoyed The Other Wind even more. I think this is a fantastic conclusion to the series. So much going on here. Um, all the characters I love, the plot I love, because I think she, the kind of underlying ideology of the whole thing just really matches with my thoughts and feelings about the world and about life. Um, I loved, there was lots of kind of ideas in here about being connected to rocks and the earth and stuff, which I love reading about because I like to see maybe where the likes of N.K. Jemisin has come from within the world of speculative fiction and Le Guin definitely has that sort of natural world connection so it reminded me of Jemisin. Yes, I just really 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 enjoyed this and I think it does a really good job of concluding the whole thing and I will no doubt be returning to all of these books to be honest. I would love to reread the whole cycle again now knowing what I know um, and I love them. I would highly recommend them. I think if you guys are not typically speculative fiction readers, but you like quiet books, natural books, books about kind of compassion, and friendship and love, overcoming things in life, um, about balance and yeah, just finding equilibrium, that sort of idea, but you don't typically read speculative fiction, I would recommend that you at least try the Earthsea Cycle. It has got wizards and dragons. I know that can be a bit of a turn off for some people because it's just not that kind of thing. Um, but 
they're so beautiful she's such she also just has a beautiful writing style in general which I think is very much married to the themes of her books which is what makes the style so great but yes I would really really recommend them to those of you guys who are not necessarily speculative fiction or um, readers but who like that kind of thing if you don't like that kind of thing but you are a speculative fiction reader then you might actually not like these I've read a few reviews of people being like these are kind of boring I don't know what they're doing which is absolutely fine it just depends what you like in a book but yes anyway highly recommend um, and I will be returning to them no doubt in the future. Okay, on to another sort of concluding book in a series. This is Samuel R. Delaney's Return to Navarion. I feel like I've talked about these books so much, although actually I've been talking about them over a period of like two, three years, so um, it's probably not as fresh in you, you guys' minds as it is in mine, though I did read the third book not too long ago. This is the fourth book. These are books which are made up of sword and sorcery tales with loads and loads of criticism and th theory thrown in. They're from the 70s and 80s, um, there's lots of queer theory, um, psychoanalytic theory, just general stuff that was big in the 70s and 80s. Most of it finds its way into these stories somehow. Um, so yes, they're sword and sorcery tales but they're very sort of postmodern, they're very self-reflective. Um, there's lots going on here. You could analyse them for decades. Um, they're, so they're quite complex to talk about. Oh, sorry, I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> and then there's kind of a through line. There's recurring characters. There's one of the kind of main overarching storylines is the character of Gorgic, who was a slave while he was actually son of a merchant living in a city. Um, there was a big... Um, overthrow of power, new regime came in, he ended up becoming a slave, then he is kind of rescued from slavery by um, a noble woman and then he, once he's released from her service, he essentially makes it his mission to eradicate slavery in this realm. So that's the kind of overarching storyline and by the time we get to this book, slavery has been eradicated but obviously it is not that simple for, Del for Delaney or for life um, and there are still lots of different things going on with power, with violence, with desire which is a big part of this book. So this book's really looking particularly at desire, lust um, and how that motivates people, particularly drawing from psychoanalytic theory. Um, the other books do too. It was even more noticeable in this one. I think this is that is this one's sort of main um, focus, I guess. There's also ideas about mirroring and echoes through time and space. Mirroring, obviously, coming from Lacan. Also, the time and space thing, um, causality, all that kind of stuff. Lots of heavy, heavy stuff. Um, so yes, these books will work your brain, but they are kind of totally unique, at least in my view. I've not read anything remotely similar to them because he's playing with everything everything you think you know about fiction everything you think you know about stories about sword and sorcery about speculative fiction about theory he's mixing it all together you know he's bringing new ideas and things to theory by putting it into fiction there's just so much going on in these books and they will bend your brain and i will no doubt return to them hopefully when i'm even wiser in my older age and you know can get even more stuff out of them. They're sort of enjoyable in that sort of way, in the way that they are a little bit difficult but rewarding um, and unique. Yes, I'm not a massive fan of psychoanalytic theory, it's never been a body of theory that I'm particularly drawn to, interested in, um, so for that reason this book fell a little bit shorter of some of the others for me just because it's not my focus, my preferred focus. Nonetheless, I can very much appreciate Delaney's genius in this book and I'd be interested to know if any of you guys have read them, will read them, what you thought about them. I think they're one of those Marmite books where you're either going to really love them or you're just going to be like, this is so pretentious and ridiculous, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. But the thing is with the pretension in these is that I like that they're wrapped in that sword and sorcery parcel um, because it's sort of really, it's kind of self-reflective of its own 
attention, if you know what I mean. I highly recommend Delaney if you want a little bit of a challenge. I am excited to read some different Delaney because he also wrote sci-fi, um, I think, and all sorts of other things. So yes, I've read these and I've read his non-fiction, but I haven't read any of his other fiction. So I'm looking forward to reading some non-Navarion Delaney fiction. Okay, here's a book that matches my jumper. <laughs> um, this is Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi. This is long listed for the booker, so it's another part of my, my booker reading. I go back and forth about this book and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to talk very intelligently about it because I am confused. <laughs> Um, so this is a first person narrative from the point of view of Antara. She's an artist living in Pune in India with her husband um, and she's facing the deterioration of her mother Tara who has got dementia so she's losing her memories and as we open the book um, Antara says you know she enjoyed sort of inflicting a bit of misery on her mother by reminding her of all, all the questionable things from her childhood and she enjoyed Get, get, making her mother feel guilty basically and with her mother forgetting things um, Antara is having to face a lot of uncomfortable things about her childhood about her mother about becoming a caregiver to a person that you don't think gave you much care um, so yes their relationship is fraught with many many problems you know as a child she was at times neglected she was just privy to a lot of weird and strange situations. Um, her mother was an eccentric woman. So we're looking at mother-daughter relationships in this, obviously. We're looking at how those relationships can create a very strong bond, a bond that sort of destroys your sense of self, um, how the two sort of co-constitute one another, um, how that bond can be made up of both intense love and intense hatred. It packs a powerful punch, this book. The language is really strong and confident for a debut novel. I think part of that is because Doshi really um, just tapped into a very strong narrative voice with that kind of intense mother-daughter relationship because obviously it's a first-person narrative. You really feel all of Antara's emotions, the resentment, the bitterness, the fieriness. She does a really good job of showing how the line between self and mother can become blurred, particularly towards the end of the book. Do you think the end of the book was a little bit rushed? It takes us a while to get into it, and then suddenly we're moving really, really fast. Um, this is not a book I'd recommend if you're in a sensitive place, if you're in a pl place where you want love and hope and lightness. Um, if you want those things, I would go with Earthsea, <laughs> um, because this is intense. It's an intense read. And it took me a little while to get through just because it was so much, especially when I'm in a reading slump. So I think I'll follow whatever she writes next because there's lots to like about her writing here. But it was possibly just not my kind of thing or the kind of thing that I needed to be reading right now. Sorry about the light, you guys. It's suddenly become really sunny and... <sighs> it's all confusing. <laughs> yes, unsure whether I liked it or not. Um, but definitely intrigued by her writing. Um, okay, next we have The Summer Book by Tova y Janssen, I think is how you say it. Um, so this is a sweet little book. It is a selection of chapters about a grandmother and her granddaughter and their summers on a little Finnish island. And obviously there's lots of nature writing here. You kind of get an idea about um, summer there and what it looks like and what it feels like. There's no particular plot line, so we dip in and out. I can't remember the name for that kind of book. <laughs> um, but you guys kind of, you guys kind of know what I mean, I hope. Um, there's lots of playfulness and joy in this book and whimsy and I love how it shows the kind of similarities between older people and younger people and how those two generations can really come together and um, enjoy one, an one another's company as well as the differences obviously. Um, the kind of growing pains of growing up, growing older for the granddaughter and the feeling of growing old and coming towards the end of your life for the grandmother. Um, it's a quiet meditative book. It's mostly quite light but it does deal with some big themes in that kind of light way. Like theological ideas, um, like I said growing up and growing old, about grief and 
loss and all of that sort of thing as well. So yes, it's definitely an atmospheric book. It's not one where you're going to get lost in the storyline because there isn't really a storyline. It's not one where you're really going to get lost in the characterization either, but it's nice to see the natural world up against some of those kind of human wisdoms. And um, yes, it's, it's a very sweet little book. And if you fancy something short and sweet, I would recommend it. I think this is our final book today. Um, this is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. Again, this is on the long list for the booker. Again, I wasn't quite sure what to make of this. Um, lots to appreciate about it, but I'm not sure I enjoyed it very much. It's about Wallace, who is a young, queer, black postgraduate doing a biochemistry degree in a Midwestern university. Um, he has primarily white friends and white colleagues, and he frequently feels awkward and out of place because of that, and also because they're terrible people. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so over a series of days, over the at the end of summer, um, everything kind of seems to come to a head. Uh, his father has recently died, which is forcing him to think about some of the traumas from his past and the things that he's escaping from his childhood in Alabama. Um, and he enters into a rather ill-advised relationship with a domine domineering friend. Um, I think this book will appeal to lots of people. It's a contemporary campus novel um, which is looking at this group of friends in forensic emotional detail, like every line of dialogue, you're going to get the emotional reaction. It's that sort of level of emotional intensity. Um, it's written in visceral and intimate prose. It's affecting for that reason and I think it will definitely appeal to lots of people. Um, it's about racism, both overt and covert, um, that Wallace encounters and the sorts of microaggressions that begin to really wear him down, as well as the overt aggressions as well. Um, especially when he's kind of in an emotional place following the death of his father. From my perspective, obviously I have never experienced um, microaggression from a race point of view, have experienced them from a woman point of view, um, but so obviously my perspective is limited in that sense. But I do think this novel does a really good job of showing how microaggressions work, why they're so painful, why they can really wear someone down and break someone down because, like I said, it has got that forensic level of detail, so it's really going to show you how those microaggressions work. In terms of the prose, some of the language is really excellent, some of it is completely overall, sometimes ridiculous, some of the character development, some of the plot lines, some, some of the dialogue is really pertinent and well written, some of it is really awkward. So it's patchy, I kind of couldn't forgive him for that because it's a debut novel, it's quite a long one and it does feel quite confident and well fleshed out. But on a more general note, I don't think this book was for me. I'm not a person that particularly enjoys that level of emotional writing, um, where you kind of get a breakdown every second of it. It's just not my kind of thing. Um, and it seems to be one of those books which is about a bunch of people who are kind of just being really horrible to each other, which again is not really my bag. I was desperate for Wallace to just find some better friends, some non-racist friends, and I was also really excited for the marriage of biochemistry and narrative in this book. I thought it would play a bigger role because I just love a little bit of science in my books, but there just didn't seem to be much of that on that front. It seemed that Wallace could basically kind of be doing any degree, so I was a little bit disappointed on that front, but that's just me. It's kind of the, it's just the kind of reader that I am. But I do think Brandon Taylor has accomplished a lot in it for a debut novelist, and I think lots of people will enjoy it. And I think for lots of people, he will be the kind of writer that they enjoy. So that is everything, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. A lot quicker than usual. I've only been filming for 38 minutes. Usually we are over an hour. So, um... Yes, I'm sorry about that for those of you guys who do, who do like a longer video, but we'll hopefully be back next month with a longer video and less of a reading slump. I've got to keep my fingers crossed for that because I'm feeling sad. I want to get out of this slump, you know. Hope you enjoy book club books. Hope that you enjoyed Between the World and Me if you read it with me. Hope you weren't too disappointed by Redhead by the side of the road if you read that with me. Um, but yes, thank you guys for watching today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!